in the quaint turn of Willow's End, shrouded in the perpetual mist that clung to its ancient stones and gnarled trees, the air was thick with whispers of the past. The locals, a tight-knit community bound by generations of shared history, seldom spoke to outsiders about the town's eerie legends. Yet, as dusk settled like a soft shroud over the landscape, shadows whispered tales of the unseen. The story begins on a dreary night in October. Sarah Wexler, a young writer fascinated by the paranormal, had arrived in Willow's End, driven by rumors of its haunted heritage. Her intent was clear, to document the most chilling tales from the town for her next book. She rented an old Victorian house on the outskirts, the Blackwood residence, known among villagers for its unsettling history and inexplicable occurrences. As she unpacked, the house seemed to groan under the weight of its own stories, the walls echoing with the faint, untraceable whispers of the past. Ignoring the creeping chill down her spine, Sara set up her writing equipment in the study, a room lined with bookshelves that held dusty volumes bound in spider webs and secrecy. That night, as the wind howled outside, Sara began her work by lighting a few candles and poring over the local archives she had gathered. The clock struck midnight when she stumbled upon an old diary belonging to Elizabeth Blackwood, the original owner of the house, who had mysteriously vanished in 1891. Her entries were erratic, filled with frantic mentions of seeing apparitions and hearing voices that begged for help. As Sara delved deeper into the diary, the candlelight flickered violently, casting monstrous shadows against the walls. A cold draft swept through the room, and she heard a faint sobbing sound from the hallway. Gripping the diary tighter, she called out, Hello. Is someone there? But only her echo was quiet. Determined to not succumb to her fears, Sara continued her reading, discovering that Elizabeth believed the house stood on cursed ground, plagued by spirits of those wronged in the distant past. The diary ended abruptly, with a final entry that read, They are coming for me. I must hide where they cannot find me. The ink was smudged, as if hurriedly written. Feeling a mix of dread and curiosity, Sara decided to explore the house, hoping to locate Elizabeth's hiding place. Each step on the creaking wooden floors punctuated the eerie silence of the night. She ventured into the cellar, where the air was musty with the scent of decay. There, hidden behind a false wall, she found an old trunk. Inside, Sara discovered Elizabeth's belongings, photographs, letters, and a strange, ancient-looking amulet. As she examined the amulet, the air grew oppressively cold, and the sobbing sound returned, louder this time, accompanied by whispers. Sara spun around to see a shadowy figure at the foot of the stairs. Frozen in fear, she could only watch as it approached, its form becoming clearer, a woman, dressed in the garb of the late 1800s, her face pale and eyes hollow. Help me, the apparition whispered, its voice a chilling echo in the confined space. Heart pounding, Sara asked, are you Elizabeth Blackwood? Yes, the figure replied, and you must help me release the spirits bound to this land. Only then can we all be free. The woman vanished as suddenly as she had appeared, leaving Sara trembling in the dark, the amulet still clutched in her hand. She knew then that her stay in Willow's End was not merely for a book, but for a much darker purpose. Sara had to uncover the mysteries of the land, the curse, and how to break it. Her journey would take her deeper into the realms of the paranormal than she had ever gone before. As dawn broke over Willow's End, casting light on the hidden corners of the Blackwood residence, Sara felt the weight of the task ahead. The town was waking, unaware of the chilling events of the night. 
But for Sara, the story was just beginning. With the first light of day filtering through the grimy windows of the Blackwood residence, Sara's determination solidified despite the lingering dread that clutched at her heart. She couldn't leave Willow's end, not now, not when the spirits themselves had drawn her into their plight. Armed with the amulet and the diary of Elizabeth Blackwood, she set out to uncover the depths of the curse that had plagued the land for centuries. The town of Willow's End, with its overgrown parts and ivy-clad buildings, seemed to watch her every move. The locals, peering from behind curtained windows, whispered as she passed, their eyes full of a mix of fear and curiosity. Sara made her way to the local library, hoping to find records or any mention of the town's darker history. Inside, the library was a cavernous room, the walls lined with books that seemed as old as time itself. The librarian, an elderly woman named Mrs. Harrow, watched Sara with sharp, discerning eyes. Looking for ghosts, Ayu, she asked, her voice a scratchy whisper that seemed to blend with the rustling of the turning pages. Yes, I'm researching the history of the Blackwood residence, Sara replied, trying to sound more confident than she felt. Mrs. Harrow nodded, her eyes narrowing slightly. Follow me, she said, leading Sara through a labyrinth of shelves until they reached a secluded corner of the library. Here, the books were covered in a thick layer of dust, untouched by time. You might find what you are looking for here, the librarian said, her tone ominous. For hours, Sara poured over old newspapers, land deeds, and personal letters, piecing together the grim history of Willow's End. It appeared that the town had been built near a site sacred to the local indigenous tribes, who were brutally driven away or killed. Their spirits, restless and vengeful, were rumored to haunt the land, bound by their unresolved agony. As she read, the lights in the library flickered, casting long shadows that danced across the walls. The wind outside picked up, howling through the cracks and crevices of the building, as if protesting the disturbance of its secrets. Sara felt a chill run down her spine when she found an old map indicating a hidden burial ground right beneath where the Blackwood residence now stood. Realizing the library was closing, Sara gathered her notes and thanked Mrs. Harrow, who seemed to hesitate before speaking. Be careful, Ms. Wexler. Some truths are better left undisturbed, she warned, her eyes reflecting a genuine fear. Night had fallen by the time Sara returned to the Blackwood house. The building seemed even more ominous in the darkness, its silhouette a stark contrast against the lightly clouded night sky. The wind carried whispers as she unlocked the door, the voices of the past urging her forward. Inside, she set up her workspace again, the diary open and the amulet lying next to her laptop. She tried to focus on her writing, but the sense of being watched grew overwhelming. Glancing around nervously, Sara could almost feel the eyes on her, the weight of countless generations bearing down. The house creaked and groaned around her, the walls themselves seeming to breathe with a life of their own. Then, the air grew inexplicably cold, and the candle flames flickered as if in response to an unseen breath. Sara wrapped her sweater tighter around herself, her eyes scanning the dark corners of the room. Suddenly, the room went dark as every candle snuffed out simultaneously. A suffocating darkness enveloped her, thick and oppressive. Sara's heart raced, her breath coming in short, sharp gasps. She fumbled for her flashlight, her hands shaking. When the light flickered on, Sara gasped. The room was filled with figures, dozens of them, translucent and shimmering with an ethereal light. They were dressed in various attires, spanning different eras, their faces twisted in sorrow and pain. 
We need release, they whispered in unison, their voices a desperate plea that echoed around the room. Sara stepped back, her mind reeling. The figures advanced, their hands reaching out to her, their touch cold as ice. You hold the key, they said, pointing to the amulet. Fumbling with the amulet, Sara felt an energy pulsing through it, a power that seemed to beckon the spirits closer. She knew then that she was not just a visitor in Willow's End, she was a catalyst for something much greater, something that could either free these souls or bind them forever. As the spirits hovered around her, Sara prepared to delve deeper into the mysteries of the amulet and the land's dark past, knowing that her journey was far from over. With the spectral figures surrounding her, Sara clasped the amulet tightly. The air thickened, crackling with the charged energy of unspoken stories and suppressed anguish. The spirit's eyes, hollow yet pleading, bore into hers, their presence overwhelming the small study with a palpable sense of desperation and sorrow. Please help us find peace, they murmured, their voices overlapping and intertwining into a haunting chorus that filled the room and seemed to seep into the very walls of the Blackwood residence. Sara's mind raced as she tried to comprehend the magnitude of what she was being asked to do. She was no medium or exorcist, she was a writer, unprepared for the reality of confronting actual spirits. Yet, there was a part of her, perhaps fueled by her innate curiosity and empathy, that knew she could not turn away from them. She needed to understand the origins of the curse to help these tormented souls find rest. I'll try, she whispered, her voice barely audible above the wind that now screamed against the windows, as if the night itself was protesting her decision. The figures nodded, their forms flickering like candle flames caught in a draught. They retreated slightly, giving her space to breathe, to think. Sara opened Elizabeth Blackwood's diary once more, her hands trembling as she turned the pages, seeking any clue that might help her understand how to use the amulet. The diary spoke of a time when the land was alive with the energy of those who had called it home long before the settlers arrived, of sacred rituals and guardians who protected the balance of spiritual and terrestrial forces. Elizabeth wrote of her growing horror as she realized that her family's home had been built upon the site of such a sacred place, desecrated by their presence. As Sara read, the wind outside died down as suddenly as it had arisen, and the house fell eerily silent. The only sound was the rustling of pages as she feverishly took notes, piecing together a plan. She needed to find the exact location of the burial ground described in the diary and the old maps. According to Elizabeth's entries, there was a specific ritual that could release the spirits, but it required the amulet and a knowledge of the ancient rites once practiced by the original guardians. Determined, Sara gathered her supplies, salt, candles, and the amulet, preparing to venture out into the heart of the night to find the sacred site. The amulet seemed to pulse with a light of its own, guiding her as she navigated through the dark, twisted paths of the garden that led toward what she believed was the location of the ancient burial ground. The night was oppressively dark, the moon obscured by thick clouds, as if the sky itself was closing in around her. Every rustle in the underbrush made her heart jump, every shadow seemed to move just beyond the beam of her flashlight. Finally, she arrived at a clearing, the ground beneath her feet unnaturally cold. This was the place. Setting the candles in a circle around her, Sara placed the amulet in the center. She tried to recall the ritual as described in the diary, her voice shaking as she began to recite the ancient words, hoping she was pronouncing them correctly. The air around her grew colder, and the ground seemed to tremble beneath her feet. 
Suddenly, the spirits appeared again, encircling the clearing. Their faces were less tormented now, their expressions imbued with a cautious hope. Sara continued the ritual, pouring all her concentration into the chant, her hands trembling as she held the amulet aloft. The amulet glowed brighter, illuminating the clearing with an ethereal light. The wind picked up once more, howling through the trees, carrying with it the voices of the ages, whispering secrets long forgotten. The ground beneath the circle began to glow, lines of light tracing ancient symbols and patterns that pulsed with power. As the ritual reached its climax, a deep rumbling filled the air, the earth vibrating with the force of the unleashed energies. Sara felt the power flowing through her, a conduit for the amulet's ancient magic. The spirits began to fade, one by one, their faces transforming from expressions of agony to peace, their ethereal forms dissolving into the night air, released at last. But as the last of the spirits vanished, the rumbling grew into a roar, the ground splitting beneath her feet. Sara stumbled back, the amulet still clutched in her hand, as a deep chasm opened in the center of the clearing. From within it, a blinding light shone, and a new, terrifying figure began to emerge, its form massive and shadowy, its presence exuding malevolence. Sara realized in horror that the ritual had not only released the bound spirits, but had also awakened something ancient and dark something that had been buried and forgotten for a reason. As Sara watched the chasm widen, her heart pounded with a fear so profound it felt as if it would burst from her chest. The earth beneath her feet trembled, and the air thickened with an oppressive energy that made it hard to breathe. From the depths of the opened ground, a low, menacing growl echoed, resonating with the primal fear that grips the heart of humanity in the presence of the unknown and malevolent. The figure that emerged was shrouded in shadows, its form shifting and twisting, never fully revealing itself. Yet its eyes, if they could be called that, burned with a cold, malevolent light, piercing the darkness and fixing on sorrow with unsettling intensity. Frozen with terror, Sara clutched the amulet tighter, feeling its warmth against her palm as if it were alive. The amulet's light had dimmed in the presence of this new entity, as though cowering from a superior force. The night seemed to hold its breath, the silence so profound it was deafening. Who, what are you? Sara managed to whisper, her voice trembling. The figure's response was not in words but in a surge of dark energy that swept towards her like a cold wind. Sara stumbled backward, her mind racing for a way to protect herself. She remembered a line from Elizabeth's diary, a warning, beware the guardian of the depths, for he watches over the cursed and the damned. Realizing the amulet's light was key, Sara lifted it high, her hand shaking. She began to chant again, the words of protection that Elizabeth had scribbled in the margins of her diary, words that had been passed down through generations of guardians of the ancient rites. The air crackled around her, and the ground beneath her shook as if protesting her actions. The figure paused, its form wavering, and in that moment, Sara felt a surge of hope. The words were having an effect. However, the respite was brief. The figure roared, a sound so terrifying it seemed to shake the very soul, and advanced with renewed ferocity. Sara knew she couldn't falter. With every ounce of strength, she continued her chant, her voice growing louder, more confident. As she spoke, the amulet glowed brighter, its light piercing the darkness. The figure recoiled, its form becoming more erratic, less cohesive. But it did not retreat, instead, it seemed to absorb the darkness around it, growing larger, more threatening. Sara's mind raced as she recalled every detail she had read about the rituals and the guardians. 
She needed more than just defensive chance. She needed to understand how to bind this creature again, to seal it back into the depths from which it had come. Desperately, she flipped through the pages of the diary that she had brought with her, her fingers trembling. There, in the very last entry that Elizabeth had written, was a diagram, a complex pattern of symbols and a detailed description of a sealing ritual. But it required ingredients that Sara did not have, elements that were linked to the earth and ancient magic. The creature advanced again, its form so close now that Sara could feel the chill emanating from it, the darkness that seemed to suck the light from the air around it. She was running out of time, her only hope lay in improvising with what she had, her knowledge, the amulet, and her sheer will to survive. Stay back, she yelled, her voice echoing in the charged air. She started adapting the protective chants into a binding spell, using the amulet as a focal point for her will and the energies it contained. The symbols from Elizabeth's diagram burned bright in her mind as she visualized them surrounding the creature. The ground trembled more violently now, as if the land itself was reacting to the battle of energies taking place upon it. The creature halted, its form shimmering unstably as Sara's words and the amulet's light seemed to bind it, confining its movements. But just as Sara felt a momentary triumph, the creature let out a bellow so powerful it knocked her off her feet. She hit the ground hard, the air knocked from her lungs, her vision blurring. The amulet flew from her grasp, landing several feet away, its light dimming. Struggling to her knees, Sara's gaze fell on the amulet, despair rising in her throat. She was so close, yet now so far, her only tool of defense lying just out of reach. The creature moved toward the amulet, its form now a swirling mass of shadows and malice. Sara's mind screamed for her to move, to retrieve the amulet before all was lost. With every bit of strength left in her, Sara crawled towards the amulet, her fingers stretching out, grazing the cold metal just as the creature reached it. A surge of energy exploded around them, throwing Sara backward once again her consciousness fading as she collided with the cold, hard Sara's world spiraled into darkness as her body slammed against the unforgiving earth. The edges of her vision blurred, teetering on the brink of unconsciousness. Her fingers twitched, brushing against the cold metal of the amulet. Its pulse was faint, yet it clung to life, much like Sara herself in that desperate moment. The roar of the creature filled the night, a sound of triumph and fury that chilled the air. As Sara's eyes fluttered open, struggling against the pull of darkness, she saw the creature looming over her, its form a towering mass of shadows, undulating and coalescing into something terrifyingly solid. Its eyes blazed with a hellish glow, fixed upon her with malevolent intent. In that moment, between the beats of her frantic heart, Sara felt the weight of her failure. The creature was about to claim the amulet, to extinguish its life forever, and all her efforts would be in vain. Yet, within her, a spark of defiance flickered. She couldn't give in, not when so much was at stake. With a surge of adrenaline, Sara lunged for the amulet, her fingers wrapping tightly around it. The creature howled in rage as she pulled it close, its energy coursing through her, empowering yet searing. The ground beneath them cracked, the very earth protesting as ancient forces collided. Sara whispered the words of the binding spell, her voice a mere thread of sound but driven by sheer will. The symbols she had visualized earlier now blazed in her mind's eye, burning bright against the encroaching darkness. The air around them shimmered, the fabric of reality bending under the strain of the ritual. The creature reared back, its form wavering as the spell took hold. 
It was bound, not yet defeated, but held by the chains of light that Saras will had forged. The night itself seemed to hold its breath, the wind dying down to a whisper, the leaves ceasing their rustle. Time hung suspended in that eternal struggle between light and darkness. Sara's voice grew stronger, the chant becoming a declaration of defiance. The amulet's light flared, a beacon in the night, its glow enveloping both Sara and the creature in a cocoon of luminescence. The symbols from the diary's diagram surrounded them, etching themselves into the ground, their energy a tangible force. The creature thrashed within its bindings, its howls of rage and frustration echoing through the clearing. But the spell was unyielding, drawing tighter with each word Sar uttered. It was a battle of wills, the creature's dark fury against Sar's desperate determination. As the chant reached its crescendo, Sar felt a rush of energy so powerful it threatened to consume her. But she held on, her eyes locked on the creature, which now seemed less substantial, its form breaking apart under the relentless assault of the light. Be bound back to the depths from whence you came, and let this land be cleansed, Sara cried out, her voice carrying across the winds, a command that brooked no refusal. With a final, ear-splitting howl, the creature dissolved, its essence scattering like shadows at dawn. The amulet's light burst forth one last time, a starburst of pure energy that washed over the clearing, cleansing it of the lingering darkness. Exhausted, Sara collapsed, the amulet falling from her limp hand. Her breaths were shallow, her body spent from the ordeal. As she lay there, the first light of dawn touched the horizon, the night receding like a bad dream. The air was fresh, free of the oppressive weight that had hung over the land. But the story was not over yet. The amulet, now dim, still pulsed with a gentle light. Sara knew there was more to be done. The spirits had been released, the creature bound, but the land's wounds were deep, needing more than just spells to heal. As she gathered her strength, lying on the cold, dewy ground, Sara realized her journey through the darkness was far from over. The dawn was merely a reprieve, a moment to gather forces for the battles yet to come. As the first rays of dawn stretched across the horizon, bathing the land in a warm, golden light, Sara lay on the dew-soaked earth, each breath she drew a testament to her survival. The clearing around her, once a battleground of ancient energies, now lay silent and serene. Yet, the peace was deceptive, a thin veil over the lingering echoes of the night's horrors. Gathering her strength, Sara pushed herself up, her limbs heavy with exhaustion. The amulet, its once brilliant light now reduced to a soft glow, lay beside her, its surface cool against her palm. It had saved her, saved them all, but at a cost that was yet to be fully understood. Sara's gaze swept across the clearing, the morning light revealing the scars left by the night's ordeal. The ground was cracked and scorched in patterns that told tales of powerful forces unleashed. She stood, clutching the amulet, a renewed sense of purpose stealing her resolve. The creature was bound, but for how long? And what of the spirits that had been freed? Were they truly at peace, or did they still wander, lost between worlds? With a deep, steadying breath, Sara turned her attention back to the town of Willow's End. She needed to understand more, to dive deeper into the town's secrets. The answers lay there, in the shadowed whispers of the past, in the hidden depths of the old library, and in the memories of its oldest inhabitants. Returning to the Blackwood residence, Sara felt a shift in the atmosphere. The house, once oppressive and foreboding, now welcomed her with an air of quiet expectancy. It was as if the very walls were awaiting her next move, silent witnesses to the unfolding story. 
Over the following days, Sara immersed herself in research, revisiting the ancient texts and diaries she had found. She spoke to the townsfolk, their initial wariness giving way to a cautious acceptance. Some even shared their own experiences, tales of strange sightings and unexplained events that had been passed down through generations. Each story added a piece to the puzzle, and slowly, a clearer picture began to emerge. It wasn't just the land that was haunted but the very fabric of the town, woven with threads of grief, betrayal, and a thirst for redemption. The creature she had bound was but a guardian of these secrets, a keeper of the balance that had been so violently disrupted. Armed with this new understanding, Sara knew what she had to do. The amulet was the key, but it required more than just her will to activate its true power. It needed the collective will of the town, a unity of purpose to heal the deep wounds of the past. Organizing a gathering at the heart of the town, Sara brought together the people of Willow's End. She shared her findings, her voice steady as she spoke of their shared heritage and the path to redemption that lay before them. The townsfolk listened, their faces a mosaic of emotions, fear, sorrow, hope, as they grappled with the truth of their ancestors' actions. As the sun set, casting long shadows across the gathering, Sara led them in a ritual, not of binding, but of healing. Together, they chanted, their voices rising in a powerful chorus that filled the evening air. The amulet, placed at the center of the circle, glowed brightly, its light expanding in pulsating waves. The earth trembled gently under their feet, a soft murmur of approval from the land itself. A breeze swept through the gathering, carrying with it the faintest whispers of gratitude from the spirits that had been freed. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the light receded, the amulet's glow dimming to a soft, steady pulse. A profound silence enveloped the town, deep and encompassing, as if the world itself had paused to mark the moment of reconciliation and renewal. In the days that followed, willows and transformed. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, replaced by a sense of peace that pervaded the streets and homes. Sar, once an outsider driven by curiosity, had become a part of the town's legacy. Her name whispered with reverence and gratitude. As she prepared to leave, her mission completed, Sara took one last walk through the town. The air was crisp, the sky a clear blue, and as she passed the Blackwood residence, she felt a final whisper of the wind, like a farewell from an old friend. Her journey had begun with tales of horror, but it ended with a story of healing, a reminder that even the deepest scars could mend, given time and care. The amulet, now a silent sentinel, remained in Willow's End, a symbol of their enduring commitment to keep the balance, to respect the past, and to protect the future. As Sara drove away, the review mirror framed Willow's End one last time, its outline softening in the distance. A smile touched her lips, bittersweet and hopeful.